know that the way we store energy includes many options outside of just batteries? There are always discussions about how solar will need a ton of batteries to be useful as baseload power. There are ways we can store that energy potential without batteries, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Why do we need batteries? Well, simply put, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow, so batteries balance out the energy available for later use. But batteries have their downsides. They can be expensive, have a limited lifespan, and then there's the environmental impact to consider. That's why scientists and engineers are getting creative with alternatives. Do you think grid-scale batteries will see similar drops in cost to what we've seen from solar over the last decade? Or do you think we'll need to find alternatives to current battery technology? Let me know in the comments below. First up, let's talk about pumped hydro storage. It's like a giant water battery, but without the actual battery. Here's how it works. Water is pumped to a higher elevation when energy is plentiful and then released to flow downhill, driving turbines to generate electricity when needed. I remember visiting a pumped hydro facility. The sheer scale of it was awe-inspiring, like witnessing a man-made waterfall powering thousands of homes. The largest facility in the world is currently the Fenyang Pumped Storage Power Station in China, with its 40,000 megawatt hours of storage capacity and 3,600 megawatts of power generation ability. But it's not all perfect. These systems need a lot of space and the right geographical conditions. Plus, the environmental impact on local ecosystems can be significant. So then there's stacked blocks or gravity storage, which does the same thing, but instead of water, it moves mass. Oftentimes, these purpose-built blocks, which are raised during periods of abundant power, are then lowered using gravity to generate electricity. These facilities open up areas where traditional pumped hydro doesn't work, but still take a ton of equipment and space to be effective. Another intriguing method is compressed air energy storage, or CAES. It's like inflating a balloon with excess energy and letting it out when you need it. Energy is used to compress air into storage vessel, and then when the energy demand peaks, the compressed air is released, powering a turbine to generate electricity. There are now multiple CAES projects that use salt caverns for storage, one of which is the Tian Demonstration Project. It has a system with a capacity of 1.4 gigawatt hours of storage. Why put them in salt caverns? Well, it has a natural sealing property due to salt's plasticity, and typically it's geologically stable. But remember, while CAES is promising, it's not without its challenges. Efficiency losses during compression and the need for large-scale storage sites can be hurdles. Ever heard of flywheels? They store energy in a spinning wheel. The faster it spins, the more energy it can hold. These flywheels can reach an incredibly high speed, storing energy as rotational kinetic energy. It's a bit like a supercharged spinning top. I remember playing with a spinning top as a kid. The way it could spin seemingly forever always fascinated me. Flywheels feel like a grown-up high-tech version of that. Flywheels are great for their durability and quick response time but the challenge is in maintaining those high speeds without losing energy over time. Next, let's turn up the heat and talk about thermal energy storage. This method involves storing energy in the form of heat or cold. I remember during an ice storm when our power went out, we huddled around the fireplace for warmth and it made me think about how precious energy is especially heat. It can be as simple as melting ice during the night to cool buildings during the day, or as complex as storing heat from the sun in molten salt. The Gemma Solar Thermosolar Plant in Spain achieved a world first in 2013 by producing energy from molten salt for 36 days straight. This is thanks to its design being able to run for up to 15 hours without any solar feed of heat energy making it able to run off molten salt all night before reheating it from the sun bouncing off mirrors again the next day. Thermal energy storage is great for balancing energy grids, especially with renewable sources, but the efficiency and cost of materials can be challenging. Next, we have power to gas. This technology uses excess energy to split water into hydrogen and oxygen, creating gases that can be stored and used later to create energy. This method is particularly interesting as it doesn't lose charge over time like batteries. But the downside that needs solving is that the round trip efficiency is rather low and currently it isn't a profitable energy storage technology. Lastly, we have thermochemical energy storage, TCES, and the US company Redox Blocks has recently announced that their updated technology boasts energy density on par with grid-scale lithium-ion batteries. It uses a low-cost metal oxide material that when heated, releases oxygen and stores heat as chemical energy. Then when you add oxygen back into the system, the metal oxide consumes the oxygen, releases the heat that can be used to turn a gas turbine and generate electricity. 
Our goal is simple, use electrification and thermochemical energy storage to compete as a zero carbon replacement for natural gas, said Redox Block CTO Jorg Petrush. We have proven the science. Our focus now is to scale up the commercially relevant sizes. Funding from the DOE and CEC across two large markets and the partnerships with our customers across multiple industrial sectors are key enablers. While I do think that these technologies are an important part of storing electricity, I still believe that more green power generation is really the key to our future world. So check out this video where I talk about geothermal power.